Hello everybody. In this series of videos, I want to discuss with you how we can work with standard curves and what is the point of standard curves, how we set up a standard curve and how we can analyze data from a standard curve. So first things first, what's the purpose of a standard curve in uh, laboratory sciences? Well, with a standard curve, what we can do is actually we can determine an unknown quantity uh, by simply measuring known quantities and then comparing the unknown, the measurement of the unknown quantity with the known quantities. Sounds pretty abstract, so let's have a look at a concrete example. So let's say our aim is to determine the concentration of glucose, concentration of glucose in, um, say, in honey. And uh, how would we do that? Well, we would need to take our honey. So here we've got our sample of honey. We would probably dilute this a little bit and make a, solu a working solution of honey. So here we have our solution of honey that we can measure. Honey solution. We would carry out a reaction where something reacts with the glucose in the honey and this might then lead to a color change. So different color. Uh, let's say an absorbance that we can measure in the spectrophotometer. And this absorbance uh, depends on the concentration of glucose. And from this, we are trying to figure out the concentration, concentration of glucose in our honey sample. Um, and what we would get is just probably simply uh, a number like uh, this uh, reaction gives an absorbance of 0.1. Let's make something up, 0 0.400. Zero, but what does this absorbance actually mean? So what we can do is we can actually use uh, known concentrations of glucose. And we measure in the same reaction, we measure the absorbance of these known concentrations. And uh, we then compare our measured concentration of the honey with the known concentrations. So how would that look like? Well, we determine our samples of glucose in honey. We do that in triplicate because that's always good to have more than one sample. So these are our absorbance measurements of the glucose in our honey sample. And then we compare this absorbance with the same uh, reaction when we use known concentrations of glucose and where we also measure the absorbance. And we see that, uh, you know, if we've got an absorbance of, say, 0 0.4, so 0 0.4, that would be this one, this would correspond roughly to a concentration that we or an absorbance that we would get when we have a concentration of 20 microgram per milliliter solution. And what we usually then do is we create a standard curve. So in this standard curve, what we do is we look at the concentrations of glucose and we can determine 
what these concentrations should be. So that's in our control. So this, uh, these are the glucose concentrations that we measure for our standard curve. And uh, we also then measure the corresponding absorbance. So for example, a uh, glucose concentration of 20 microgram per milliliter would give us an absorbance of 0 0.401 when we do the reaction. And all we need to do now is really take our samples and then look at the standard curve and try to read from that standard curve the corresponding concentration. And how are we going to do that? So let's say we have a sample of 0 0.400. What we would then do is we would use our standard curve and here we've got the standard curve where we've plotted the concentration. We plotted the concentration of our known glucose samples versus the measured absorbance. And the known glucose concentrations, this is our independent variable, so that goes on the x-axis. And what we measure, that goes on the y-axis, that's the dependent variable, that's the absorbance. So if we want to figure out what is the concentration of glucose that uh, is equivalent to an absorbance of 0 0.4, all we need to do is we need to go to where we measure 0 0.4. We go over here until we hit this line of best fit for our standard curve. And then we go down here and we see that the concentration of our standard curve that gives us an absorbance of 0 0.4 would be roughly 20 microgram per milliliter. So really that is the principle of a standard curve. And uh, obviously we need to do a few things before we can get to the standard curve and before we can make our measurement. And that will be discussed in the next part of working with standard curves. So thank you very much for watching and I hope this makes sense.